Hey guys, it's Aang. And today I'm going to be telling you guys that I finally finished the Alabasta arc. Womp, 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 womp. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Alabasta actually took me a long time to finish. I know some of you guys in the comments were like, wow, you finished it so fast. No, I like stopped watching One Piece for a couple weeks because they took it off of Netflix and I was too lazy to watch it on Country World. They put it back on Netflix, yay! So I was able to finally finish Alabasta and I feel like there's just so much stuff that happened. So I, I made a lot of like notes over here. So let's get started. So we finally enter Alabasta and we do learn more about the deeper issues of Alabasta, the Baroque work agents and how they got the people of Alabasta to believe that the king stole all of the rain using the dance powder because they took away all the rain. This created drought in Alabasta which left many people in poverty. Baroque Works was obviously run by Crocodile himself and everyone including the king thought that Crocodile was a hero because they thought that he protected the land from the pirates but you know unknowingly he was always the leader of the Baroque Works organization that framed the king for stealing the rain. Finally got to Alabasta and they stopped by Nanohana. Smoker and the marines were also there looking for the straw hats and we finally met Ace! Ace was also in town looking for Blackbeard but he was hanging out with the straw hats but later finds that he was actually baited there and only like leaves Luffy with a piece of paper but let's talk about Ace. Ace is literally Luffy but like more grown up, <laughs> more mature, you know. He thinks about everyone in the crew and tries to take care of them. I loved Ace, even though he was only there for a short amount of time. I wish he stayed longer. I wish we see him again soon. Ace was super cool. I loved his devil fruit powers, the flame flame fruit, I believe it was. During this journey, we meet people who were impacted by the war. We meet people who like lost faith in the royals. The sand sailing girl who was waiting for Vivi for like years and years. And then finally we gained her faith in the royals and in Vivi once she actually like returned and like actually had a conversation with her. And we also meet more people who like completely lost faith in the king and the royals like Koza and the rebel army and we also learn about Koza who was childhood friends with the princess Vivi and then there's also people who like never lost faith in the king so we meet Koza's father Toto. He was the only one that stayed in Yuba even like after everyone like left and he believed in the abundance that Yuba has and he continued to dig and dig every single day to find water while Crocodile continues to stand stand storms to bury Toto's progress. This part like really te made me tear up because to see the effects of war on somebody because Toto was he was just a happy person when Vivi was younger. They did like a little cut of him before and after. He lost a lot of weight. He looks a lot older too. It's just so sad to see like the effects physically on him because like even though he went through a lot he still believed in the king. He still believed in Vivi and that somehow they're still gonna make everything right again. So at this point, the crew went to Yuba thinking that the rebel army was there in attempt to stop them. But Toto said the rebel army was not there. They were currently stationed near Nanohana, which is where they actually just came from. Vivi really wanted to go back to Nanohana, but Luffy tells Vivi that, you know, stopping the rebel army is not going to stop the war. To stop the war, you have to stop the main cause of it, which is Crocodile. Luffy wants to go find Crocodile and like freaking beat him up so he could stop like the war. Because even though they stopped the rebel army, you know, Crocodile is still going to influence influence anyone to fight. So then, you know, Vivi and Luffy start literally beating each other up, fighting. Luffy tells Vivi, you know, you're not alone. It's okay to share the burden with all of us because we're here for you. And Vivi breaks down and admits like, you know, maybe Luffy's right. So they head to Rain Base to fight Crocodile to freaking beat this man up because what are you doing, sir? So they go to Rain Base to meet Crocodile at the casino. When they entered, they were actually being chased by Marines and Smoker. The smoker's freaking everywhere. I feel like in like a comedy show, like, like a little cartoon, it's just like, you know, the main crew like running away and then the police officer is like, no, come back here, come back here. So they went to Rain Base to meet Crocodile at the casino and they entered while being chased by Marines and Smoker. There was a hallway that they were led to because they're like, you guys are guests here, like, you know, trying to make everything like okay inside of the casino. But, you know, they kept getting chased by the Marines and Smoker. The Straw Hats were actually led down a hallway and there was like two different ways to go. There was a VIP section and then there was the pirate section. And obviously Luffy was like, but we're pirates. Of course, we're going to go to the pirate one. They all went to the pirate one and they ended up being captured by Crocodile. Even Smoker was captured, which is so funny to me because like... Well, there you go. There's the straw hat smoker. Catch them now. They were stuck in there. Crocodile was also with Vivi. Vivi caught up to them outside of the jail. The smoker locked them in, fed the key to a banana gator and said, Hey, 
one of these gators have it, you can fight them and try to get the key to get your friends out. Before Crocodile left, Sanji actually called Crocodile from the outside of the casino. And he was like, yeah, I missed the prince. He, oh, you got my friends over there. Sorry about that. But thank you for letting me know that they're there. And all of a sudden he's like, Ugh, uh, outside because the millions broke work people beat him up everyone in inside of the jail was like no sanji our one chance but you blew it no but it was all in next because sanji actually was the one that was holding on to the baroque works million dude and was getting him to talk on the phone and he pretended that he got beaten up so then he lured crocodile outside of the casino chopper distracted crocodile while sanji went inside and he beat up all the banana gators he found the key but they realized it was a fake so then they found mr three inside of one of the gators randomly they got him to use his devil fruit powers he has a wax wax fruit right so then he used his finger he made like a little keyhole and then bam he got them out. But having this room underwater and then the room was like getting destroyed because it was being flooded. The crew had to swim their way up outside of the casino and you know, having devil fruit powers, you're unable to swim. So they decided to save Smoker and Smoker also decided to let them go. A Smoker ended up leaving Toshigi to be in charge of the marines at Alabasta. And he was telling her, you know, you have free reign, you can decide what you wanna do, whatever you think is right in the moment. So Toshigi is in charge of the marines at this point. So the crew head to Alabarna to attempt to stop the war because, you know, the rebel army's over there, the royal army's there, and they're gonna be fighting at the palace. As they're on their way to Alabarna, Luffy stays behind to fight Crocodile. In the moment, I was like, yeah, Luffy's got this, Luffy's got this, but then, Crocodile started using his stand power and I was like, damn it! Because it, this was before Luffy kind of figured out about the water thing. Luffy kind of lost that fight really badly. And I was like, well, Luffy died again. <laughs> At this point, I really did know that Crocodile's weakness was water because obviously he was the one that took away water from Alabasta and because he took away the water, he's literally unstoppable. You know, that's why Crocodile's really crusty. He needs some lotion, man. But then after that fight, Crocodile left and Robin actually came and saved Luffy and sent Luffy off with Pell, which is one of the soldiers for the palace. At this point, I couldn't really understand Robin. I was like, okay, like she keeps working with Crocodile, but like, why is she like low key helping the Straw Hats? She also didn't kill the Baba guy, the Mama guy. I forgot his name, bro. She also didn't actually kill him, right? And I always knew that she didn't. I was so happy when I saw him again. I was like, no one dies in the show. No one really dies in the show. So at this point, I kind of was like thinking about Robin. I was like, okay, well, she's working with Crocodile. I have a feeling she's gonna end up like backstabbing him at one point. So the crew reach Alabarna and Vivi head to like the entrance of, you know, where the rebel army is gonna collide with the royal army to like physically stop them being like, yo, stop, don't fight. While the rest of the Straw Hats went to deal with the other, you know, Baroque work holiday peoples. At this point, a Baroque work member was disguised as someone from the royal army and then shot the cannon, which caused the sand to go everywhere and no one could see or hear Vivi at this point. And I was like, bro! And then Vivi and Karu ended up getting trampled because no one could see or hear them. And then even Koza just passed by Vivi and Vivi was like, Koza? My friend? Leader? And Koza's just like, nah, I'm gonna kill these people. There was a stampede of rebel army people on their way to the palace. And then Vivi was just being protected by Karu. He was being trampled on by like horses, camels, and people running by foot into the palace. And then Mr. I think Mr. Two appeared and was like going to try to capture Vivi. But then Karu, even though he was so injured, carried her on her on his back and ran as fast as he could and climbed the whole wall to get away from Mr. Two. And they did. And he brought her as far as he could into the palace. So at this point, we have like mini fights between Zoro meeting the swordsman or like that metal guy. Freaking Zoro! This guy gets sliced so much. Sliced so much. But somehow he's still able to walk around, you know what I mean? And Zoro like gained the ability to listen to like the rhythm to benefit him in like the fight. Sanji also beat Mr. Two, even though he's such a simp, even though he knows it's Mr. Two pretending to be Nami, he still refuses to hurt him. But I think it was still cool that he, you know, kind of figured out a way to get him not to be looking like Nami and so he was able to fight him. Also, Nami was fighting the sea urchin girl, literally sea urchin girl. She has a new weapon that Usopp made. I call it like a science weapon for parties. 
<laughs> Science weapon for parties. Nami was like trying so hard to get a new weapon to be useful, but then it was just like the manual was like for party tricks. And I was like, Usopp, what the heck? But I'm really glad that Nami was smart enough to kind of figure it out. You know, even Usopp was like, you know, because we're not like physically strong, we have to use our brain to like fight these people. And I'm really glad that Nami figured it out somehow. And then we have Chopper and Usopp beating the mole girly, the baseball dude, and the gun dog. I was really proud of uh, Chopper and Usopp for gaining strength during that fight. And even Usopp was like literally in a full body cast, <laughs> even like towards the ending, he, his weapon was literally like a chalkboard with like scratching it with his nails. But yeah, I'm really glad that they ended up beating them. Like he said to Nami, we have to use our brain somehow. And I'm really glad that Usopp had Chopper because Chopper really helped in, in that fight. So then after those fights, Vivi finally reaches the, the castle and attempt to blow it up to get, you know, the attention of everyone that is fighting so she could stop the war and like speak the truth. Yo. Crocodile did the shit. Stop fighting. You're fighting for no reason. Crocodile stops her and then Koza comes and then Vivi explains everything. Koza and the royal army decide to surrender using white flags to stop the fighting. But then a hidden Baroque work person disguised as a royal army member, which I was so mad again, shoots Koza like four times. Somehow Koza still lives, but you know, four times and then the fighting starts again. Why would they shoot you? They betrayed you. And then, you know, fighting breaks out. And then Crocodile says that there's a cannon hidden somewhere in the area that will destroy the whole city and that it will go off at a specific time. So then, you know, Vivi and the crew, they run around the whole city trying to find the cannon, including Pell, who's like searching from the sky. And then Zoro ends up in a jungle in the desert somehow this guy found vegetation in a desert he found everything but the cannon luffy finally appears resurrected from the dead with pell and then he fights crocodile as water luffy but crocodile leaves after robin and the king to find the punaglyph which is hidden in a secret location that explains where to find a very strong weapon as they make their way to the secret location robin actually runs into tashigi and the marines and robin tells tashigi about the cannon but tashigi was like yo you know we're gonna catch you first and then we'll deal with the cannon but then you know robin beats her up and later tashigi sees luffy looking for crocodile and tashigi swallows her pride and points him in their direction and i think in the moment she kind of learned true justice and thinking about like you know the priorities right it's like yes the straw hats are right there yes robin is right there crocodile was right there but like there's a bomb that's gonna go off and it's going to explode the whole city what is like the, your priorities at this moment so obviously it was to stop the bomb somehow she later gets the marines to help the straw hats find the bomb which i think was like so weird because everyone's just like well uh marines actually pointed me in this direction that was kind of weird you really have to think about priorities in that moment especially as like a leader so i think shigi really learned that the hard way and i think um she was upset that like you know she wasn't the one to like stop crocodile she didn't even end up catching luffy at the end of the day she did help save hundreds of people later on yeah vivi realized that the cannon was actually in the clock tower and they head over there and with the help of the straw hats vivi gets to the top of the clock tower which was guarded by two broke work agents she throws them off out of the clock tower and stops the cannon only to find that there was still a bomb inside of there all along so in that moment she's like yo this is over like i don't know how to stop a bomb i can't stop this bomb right now right we don't even know how much longer we have but then pell freaking pell bro appears out of nowhere he's all calm he's standing in front of vivi he's like being all sentimental and he's saying how thankful he is for vivi and her family and for all the time that he spent with them but then he just takes the bomb flies really high into the sky explodes with him and i'm saying bro like how did he survive that i don't really i really don't I, I don't understand anyways at this point i'm bawling my eyes out because i'm like freaking crocodile look at what you did survive that but like in the moment pell sacrificed themselves for hundreds of people that are still fighting down there so when the bomb exploded the fighting stopped for only like maybe a minute because of the sound of the explosions and like you know but then right after that the fighting just continued again because you know no one really knows what's going on but they're just like well that was weird anyways let's fight each other again they didn't know and bb is just like screaming and screaming stop fighting stop fighting like you don't even know what just happened you don't even know that pell literally sacrificed his life for all of you but all you want to do is fight everyone just wants to fight so then the straw has tried to stop people from fighting and you know who's up with his chalkboard <laughs> Meanwhile, in the secret underground location, Robin tells Crocodile that the Poneglyph does not contain information on the weapon, but the history of 
alabasta. Learning this, Crocodile decides to kill Robin while Robin secretly also was going to betray him afterwards anyways. Robin and Crocodile at this point are not in cahoots anymore and Robin's like beat up on the ground. <laughs> Luffy catches up to them in the underground location and fights Crocodile. Luffy then remembers all things that Phoebe and the people of alabasta has gone through because of Crocodile's selfishness and this made Luffy very strong. So during this fight, instead of being water Luffy, he was bloody Luffy. <laughs> he had a lot of cuts and bruises from the previous fights and blood running down his arms and then he used his blood as water to fight against Crocodile which somehow was so much more powerful than water Luffy was. Crocodile ended up poisoning Luffy but even Luffy being poisoned he still continued to fight as if he had no poison in him at all. This whole time the king and everyone watching was like who is this boy? Why is he so strong? So Luffy finally defeats Crocodile and then the rain falls again in Alabasta. You know, he finally defeated Crocodile and then the rain finally fell again in Alabasta. So once the rain started falling, the fighting finally stops. And Igaram, the Baba guy, finally appears alive, bro, alive! I freaking knew it, so time! Alive! With an injured boy who earlier witnessed Mr. Two spreading lies disguised as the king and they explain what really happened and how they were all deceived by Crocodile and the Baroque Works people. So yeah, basically the war just ends because they realize they kind of see right there that it was Crocodile all along stealing the, the rain from the country. The royals finally clear their name. So this is after the war. For the next few days, Alabasta is just being rebuilt and the marines are still looking for the straw hats and are suspicious that the palace is housing them. Meanwhile, the government covers up that the Straw Hats defeated Crocodile and rewards Smoker and Tishigi. I mean, Smoker and Tishigi recognize that this was just an, like an unjust reward. It's just something that they don't deserve. They know for sure, you know, it wasn't us. It was the Straw Hats. Why are you saying this? The government is just covering it all up. They realize how the government is corrupt for this. And I think this also really reflected on the lesson that I think Smoker was trying to tell Tishigi. Like, you know, what is your priorities? What are we really fighting for just to capture the straw hats because that's our job or to save these people so then the straw hats decide to leave the palace asap after learning bond clay took their ship and vivi tells them that she wants to be a pirate but is really hesitant they make a deal that they will leave to grab their ship and meet her at the east coast of alabasta by noon the next day to make her decision. So during this time, Vivi's like, I kind of want to be a pirate. I kind of want to go on more adventures with the Straw Hats, but I have my responsibility as princess of Alabasta. So the next day she has her coming of age ceremony, which is where she like stands up in front of all of Alabasta to speak. And it was a coming of age ceremony that was delayed two years because her mission, finding, you know, Baroque works and all that stuff. But instead of speaking at the ceremony, she headed to the East Coast to meet up with the Straw Hats through the snail speakerphone while the Straw Hats are across the water on their ship. This is literally what she says. She tells them, I can't go with you, but thank you for everything. I'd like to go on more adventures, but I can't ignore the needs of my country that I love so much. I can't go, but I will stay here. And if we meet again someday, no matter how much time has passed, will you call me your friend? At this point, I was like so sad. The Straw Hats, they couldn't like reply saying, of course, Phoebe, of course, you'll always be our friend. Because, you know, the Marines were watching. The Marines at this point were following the Straw Hats after separating from Bon Clay and they just zoomed over to the East Coast to potentially pick up Vivi. But Nami said, the Marines are watching right now. We can't say anything or else Vivi will be in trouble for housing pirates, right? Which is illegal. She will become a criminal if, if they do so. So all they do is just turn around silently. But instead of with words, they reply to her with the sign of their friendship and they all raise up their left hand and they show her the X that is tattooed on their arm in silence. But with that, Vivi knew exactly what they meant. And at this point, I was like crying so much because I was like, wait, that was so cute and that was so sad. Because I think throughout the whole series or throughout all of like entering the Grand Lion arcs and then Alabasta, we really got to grow and know Vivi and really get to know her. But you know, at the end of the day, she's not a pirate. She is a princess who has a big responsibility for her country. I think this is just a journey that, that both the Straw Hats and Vivi got to go on but you know now they have to go their separate ways. Vivi goes back to her kingdom and the straw hats go back to the sea sailing away from the marines. 
Now I really want to get like a tattoo, like an X tattoo over here. But I just think that was such a beautiful way to kind of end the arc and, and to show both Vivi and the Straw Hats going on their separate ways. Maybe we'll see her again in the future because, you know, we, we still have to see Laboon, right? Right, right, Oda? We still have to see Laboon. He's still waiting to this day. I think the episode after that was just, you know, everyone was moping around being like, we miss her, we miss Phoebe. Zoro was like, well, then why don't you bring her here then? <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, they all understand her choice and they all respect that. But you know, you can't help but miss someone that you've been with for so long and really grew attached to. Weirdly, Robin just walks out of like the kitchen area and is like, hey guys. And I was just like, huh? And she's like, well, I kind of want to join your crew, right? And Luffy's like, well, okay. And everyone's just like, huh? And then everyone starts into interrogating her even Usopp was like so what are your intentions here but like somehow Robin wins everyone she even like bribes Nami with a lot of jewels crocodiles jewels and Sanji because you know she's just she's a girly obviously uh she was playing with Luffy and Chopper and later on Usopp she even got Zoro which is so funny to me I don't know it's interesting seeing Robin on their side and how blunt she is I think it's such an interesting like dynamic and energy to have on the crew Robin once was an enemy, now a straw hat. And then after we see Pell walking out of this dude's house with a crutch, and then he's all like, eh, I'm fine, I'm gonna go back home. Walks all the way home, sees his grave. I'm dead? What just happened here? And I was asking my sisters, I was like, do we get to see like Vivi's reaction to Pell being alive? And they're like, no, it just ends here. I'm like, damn, no one really dies in this show. I don't know how Pell survived that, but he did. I'm just expecting that no one's gonna die in the show at all. <laughs> At this point, I really love the story. I loved meeting so many new people. Koza, Toto, even the dynamic of Vivi's father and Igaram was so funny. Like the little flashbacks of Koza and Vivi and then Igaram and the king just following Vivi around. Even though she got beat up by Koza and stuff and fighting people in the streets, man. <laughs> it was so funny how overprotective they are of Vivi. But you know, at the end of the day, she's very strong and she was able to take care of herself to this day. And I think it was really amazing amazing to see. I loved seeing Ace, meeting Ace finally, and seeing everyone's growth throughout the battles. Like even though you really think, you kind of look at Luffy and you're just like, hmm, this guy is kind of empty brained. When it comes to fighting, this guy really knows what he's doing, I think. Kind of. I just got a flashback of him in Arlong Park and then his feet in the cement. <laughs> kind of. Overall, I'm really happy and proud of this arc. I think it was just really long, I think, especially in the middle of it when they were like traveling and there was kind of like fillery episodes, but I wanted to watch it because Ace was in it. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to skip any, any of these. I'm just going to keep watching. And I think it was super deep. We, we got to see the corruption of the government and how they wanted to make the Marines look spick and spam and like super strong, even though they weren't the ones that defeated Crocodile. We saw, you know, how someone can destroy a whole country. We saw how war, once people are fighting, they're going to be fighting until, you know, you really get the attention. Like one person starts it and then it's over. The one Baroque Works person disguised as a royal army literally starts like the fight two times. All it takes is like one like punch and then a whole war will break out. And I think it's also important to have faith. I think it's okay to stand your ground and be skeptical sometimes, but I think overall, I think it's okay to have faith, especially in people that you've known for a long time, like Toto did with the royals and everything. And I think, and another thing that like you can learn from this is to rely on other people. And I think it's okay to ask for help because throughout the whole story with uh, Vivi, Vivi tried to take on the whole burden of the country all on her own, on her shoulders, where Luffy was like, but you have us. Don't forget you have us. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be upset, but don't take on this whole matter on your own. And I know we're not really from here. We're not from Alabasta. We're not people of this country. Even though, you know, Nami was like, if you give us like a million berries, we're, we're still here for you. And I think they've all grown so close and to be really good friends with uh, Vivi to really be there for her. And they all risked their lives for the country. And you know, at the end of the day, even though Nami was really upset about it, upset about it, they didn't even get the reward. They didn't even tell Vivi to, you know, be like, it was the Straw Hats that saved the country. They're like, nah, it's okay. Like, we're good. <laughs>
we're good. We got our own mission, but like, we're good. We're just going to be pirates, you know? They didn't even get the reward because, you know, I guess that shows how genuine they wanted to help BB at the end of the day. But yeah, I think the story of Alabasta was so amazing. It was so deep. And my voice is literally going away because I'm talking so fast. I'm talking so much. It was such an amazing journey and I'm grateful to have gone through this journey. And yeah, I'm really excited for the next one. I think the next like short season is like a bunch of fillers and then it's Skypea. So, you know, expect another video of it on One Piece in a long time. It's going to take a while. But thank you guys so much for following me along on this journey. I have such an amazing time with One Piece so far. It's been so, it's been really deep and it's been really fun to watch. And I really love the crew as well. Grateful to have you guys um, listen to my thoughts. And I'm really happy that I get somewhere to like express my feelings on the show because I get so passionate about talking about things that I love. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, Again, uh, check out my anime list podcast on Spotify. I'll link it down below. It's just a pure audio version of all my review videos. It's going to be on there. So um, this one will probably be out in a couple weeks. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out my other One Piece and review videos and reaction videos. But I think that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time in Skypea. <laughs> bye bye.